So this question, based upon the fact that we have this large diagram here, is going to follow the strategy, um, the diagram strategy. So I'm going, to, I'm going to place a D here in the corner. So again, for the diagram strategy, all we really want to do, um, to start at least, is to label the diagram that's been provided based upon any quantitative information in the question, but then also any other quantitative information that we can figure out that's relevant or may be relevant to the question. So anytime again we have a diagram, we're reading in order to figure out quantitative information to put on and write actually to actually write onto the diagram. All right, so a summer camp counselor wants to find a length x. We see x is here, so that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, across a lake as represented in the sketch above. The lengths represented by AB, EB, BD, and CD on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet. So AB was the first one, so that's 1,800. So I'm going to label that as 1,800. 1,400 feet, so that's EB. So, for, so EB is 1,400. Uh, 700, so that's BD, so label that as 700. And 800, which was CD, so 800 feet. Segments AC and DE intersect at B, so we see that, and we would know that means that these angles are the same because they're vertical angles, so that's labeling with things I know. I'm not sure if it'll be helpful, but I do know that that would be a fact. Um, and angle AEB and angle CDB have the same measure, so that's already, that's already given to us there. What is the value of X? All right, so we have this diagram. Um, we are asked for the length of this side. We're basically given just about all the other lengths. And the trick here really is to notice that because these two angles are the same, the AEB and BDC, as well as these vertical angles here are the same, that forces the remaining angle, so angle A and angle C, to also be the same. Anytime you have three angles between multiple triangles that are exactly the same, you are more than likely dealing with a similar triangles question, all right, which means that the sides are proportional. So I'm going to rewrite my smaller triangle, and I'm going to separate these two triangles so you can see it a little bit clearer. So I'm going to draw the smaller one with the double angle here, the uh, single angle on the left, let's call it, and the triple angle on the right. So between the double, I'm sorry, between the single and triple, I have the side 800. And between double and single, I have the side 700. So that's what I know about that small triangle. And then if I redraw the larger triangle in the exact same orientation, so the double angle here, the single, the triple here, I know that between single and triple is what I'm looking for. So that's my x. And then between uh, triple and double, that is 1,800 here and between single and double, that is 1,400. So the fact that I recognize this as a, a similar triangle scheme, that allows me to then create a proportion um, to solve for x. So I can then say that the corresponding side of 700 over 1,400 must be equal to the corresponding size of 800 over x. So now it's just about cross multiplying, basically the way that we multi or the way that we solve proportions. So I'd have 700x is, in fact, let's not do that. I see an easier way, and this is in the non-calculator section, so I don't want to do anything that may cause you to make a math error. So I can simplify this. These zeros can cross out. These zeros can cross out. 7 divided by 14 will become 2 and 1. So I'd have 1 over 2 equals 800 over x, which makes the math a lot simpler here. So now when I cross multiply, I get x equals 1600, and therefore that is my answer.